It's Sunday morning. Is your coffee hot? Is your bacon and eggs ready to go? Do you have somewhere quiet in the house where you can sit down and enjoy yourself privately for a few minutes? Because that's right, we're back. It is the Hot 10 Reserve List Edition coming at you. Who comes in number one down the yellow brick road? Just stay tuned and find out. The market is unsure, things are slow, the reserve list still exists, and welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here, thanks for hanging out with me on the channel today as we go through the hot 10 reserve list selling cards this week. Before we get started though, there is a slowdown. Things are kind of calming down out there, people are saving their money, it looks like people are preparing for double masters, which comes up in what, six days? Or at the same time, people have other unsure reasons for saving a few dollars right now, putting it aside and saying, I better save up some money. Let's face it. The world's got a crazy thing going right now as it spins around and that leads to uncertainty. Uncertainty leads to people hoarding things and money is one of them to make sure they've got enough just in case something goes wrong, like job loss, worldwide market crisis stuff going. It, it's a crazy world sometimes. But there's still sales. There's still a few surprises this week, and we're still having fun doing it. And I hope you guys are safe wherever you are in the world. I know you know it's one of those places you're just like, you come here to chill out and relax. But I care about you guys. We'll make sure you guys are all okay. So let's get to this. Let's start our journey down the yellow brick road. Let's take a look at how things are going out there in the reserve list. And don't forget to leave those awesome comments in the comment section for my regular viewers, for the new viewers just finding this channel. Welcome everyone. Let's get started. Number 10. We're starting things out by going to alliances and that is Feldegrith with 17 sales this week, June 24th to the 30th of 2022. Now this card costs one blue, one green, one white, and one other. It was actually a pretty beasty card back in the day. For a flying hippo, it was a 4-4 with multiple abilities you could trigger off by paying the mana. The average price is $17.99 US. The market has it at $16.24 US. 10 euro, 31 cents to get this card to your house. About $25 here in Canada. Now, this card's been higher than 50 bucks and it continues to fall. If it's a card you're targeting from alliances, Again, only dabble in the near mint versions of this. It is not a super high-end reserve list card. I do expect it to bounce back one day. It has some epic kind of unique artwork that most people really appreciate. So go for the near mint copies. That will be the flippers and people like that who want to get it, the collectors who will be looking for the finer things of life. And the odd commander deck still plays this card, which can be a lot of fun. So for that reason, Feldegriff is here on the list. Let's keep going down the journey of the yellow brick road. Number nine. For a card that I hear no one wants to own, it consistently makes it here onto the top 10, even with lower sales this week. We're using our brains with Brain Geyser from Revised Edition, 18 sales this week from June 24th to the 30th of 2022. With an average price of $29.83 US, you can see it's got a strong standing in the sales department. Remember, this is a week by week overview of this card. In the past, it's had 100 sales, 150 sales, but the price is still trending down. And that means people buying it right now are definitely looking for the near mint copies for when the next buyout happens and things spike up again. A lot of these cards had their first buyout experience from Revised, and that was in late 2020, early 2021. This card has been spiraling downward ever since, but it is definitely nowhere near its previous lows. And that means people buying it now are deciding on the near mint copies for when the next wave of buyouts comes for this particular card. Let's keep counting it down the yellow brick road. Number eight. Here we have Null Rod making it back in. And you can see there this Weatherlight card refuses to quit with the Brothers War approaching before we know it. Now 20 sales this week is a pretty respectable number. The price is still kind of trending down. It had a little bump where it went up where there was a significant amount of sales, but no one's managed to keep this card inflated at the new prices, but it's still way above the $30, $40 mark back in 2020. This card right now is around $89.99 US. The market price is $85.33 US. 65 euro, 28 cents to get this card to your house. $110 here in Canada for a near mint copy. 
Now, when you're looking at the Null Rod, remember, generic mana, easy to get this thing out, can fit into any commander deck as well, and can be a real boon to what you're trying to get done in your deck, depending on how the build goes. When I see a card like this hit the battlefield, I definitely want to be able to deal with it right away because I do like to play a lot of artifacts. This card just says, I'm going to get you. And that's how I feel about it. But the prices have not been able to hold. It's still trending down. We had it last month at $95. Now it's at $89. This is a great thing for those people who never got a copy and were hoping to pick some up. And for the smaller investor who is hoping to get a little bit higher on the pool of cards they want to get for the reserve list, this is that perfect opportunity. Let's keep going down our yellow brick road. Number seven. Number seven, overlooking the ocean and the shoreline is Fastbond from Revised. Another card that a lot of players have bought in the past and let go, and now they're buying it again. This card used to be a $5 card back in 2020. It hit highs of around $80 for the revised copies. And look at it now, $23 is the average. The market price is $24.01, and you can see it's €23.71 to get this card into your house. You can find them in Canada lightly played for around $25 Canadian. But that 21 sales tells me that people still believe this card could become unbanned inside Commander. There are people only buying near mint copies, although there were three light played that I happened to notice getting bought as well. So way to go guys, Fastbond is a very respectable card to keep to your collection. Beautiful artwork, really says a lot about the old school ways of playing Magic. And you never know what they're going to do in Commander. Things can become unbanned in the weirdest ways at the strangest times. Let's go ahead and check out our next card. Number 6. Homeland sticking in there. The Anazarin Ruins is 26 sales this week with an average price of $3.20 US. The market price, $2.65 US. €2.83 to get that card into your house. And of course, here in Canada, it's around a $6 card, but it is out of stock. Now, the Anazarin Ruins is two red mana and two generic. And you choose a creature type. And those creatures, well, you know, they're going to be stuck for a while and they're not going to be doing much. And that makes it a lot of fun for the right constructed deck to play against other people in Commander. I always love this card. I've used it before. I do have it being built into some Commander deck stuff right now because I think it'll just be epic to slow people down. Yes, I'll have some haters, but I'll have some people who just say, yeah, way to go. Can't wait to try it out. I'm not sure about the Throw Bowl deck, but it might make it in there. We will see. Let's keep counting this down and see where we end up. Number five. Here we have Fatal Lore from Alliances with 28 sales this week from June 24th to the 30th of 2022. Now when you look at this card, it has an average price of only $1.99 US. The market price is $1.15 US and it's €1.48 to get this card into your house. Now the casting cost is 2 black and 2 generic mana for this sorcery card. Target opponent chooses 1. You draw three cards, or you choose and bury up to two target creatures that an opponent controls, and he or she draws up to three cards. So they even get to choose how many they're going to take, but what an amazing card to have played. This card has uses inside Commander, and it is super inexpensive. I did add this to my Throw Bowl deck. Can't wait to see how people think about it when they play against me gonna have a great time this is an underrated card that probably should be at least at the five dollar level which is almost the highest it ever went love it can't wait to see what the next bio does years from now when people recognize how great of a fun card this can be number four our next card is anvil of bow garden with 29 sales this week when you look at this card and see how far it's fallen this is why people say it's a card to buy now, the average price is $45.99. The market price, though, says $44.34. Nice and close. I really enjoy that. It's €34.31 to get this card into your house. It's around $60 here in Canada. Now, this Visions card only has two generic mana to cast it. And it says, each opponent skips his or her discard phase. During each player's draw phase, that player draws an additional card and then chooses and discards a card. I get it guys, but you're drawing an additional card. So you're picking and discarding, sure, but people used to use this in combination with Library of Lang and stuff to stop the discard trick. It was a lot of fun depending on how you use it, and it's very inexpensive now. Considering this card reached heights of $200 US, look how the mighty have fallen. This is making it a prime opportunity 
for players who want to get this card, get a near mint copy and call it a day, I totally understand why they're doing it. It's an amazing piece of magic history. Number three, Hivis of the Scale Mirage hangs in there on the top 10 this week with 34 sales, June 24th to the 30th of 2022. Now the price really has skyrocketed as this card's had a couple of buyouts in the last couple of weeks. The average price is now $8.98 US. The market price is $3.99 US. One euro, 85 cents to get this card into your house. Five bucks here in Canada, but only moderately played is available. When I look at this card and you recognize how great of a legend this is because dragons are becoming such a big thing right now with people building dragon commander decks, this is a card you're going to want to hang on to and have a good time with. It's a fun card, what can you say, guys? And he's very inexpensive. I understand why people are buying him and trying to hold on to copies. And the amount of near mint that left the market was a very smart move for all you people out there who did that. I can applaud that. Well done. You're going to see appreciation and value as the years go by. What an amazing week it's been for this card. Number two. Rainbow Veil Fallen Empires has 37 sales this week to hold on to the number two position. Here in Canada, it's around a $16 Canadian card for moderately played. The average though is $11.29 US. The market price is $15.65 US, 10 euro 20 cents to get this card into your house. When I was younger, no one really appreciated the Rainbow Veil. Not many people even thought about it because you had to give it to an opponent. It's when Ice Age came along when we could use this card and then sack it to our Zurin orbs to make sure the opponent didn't gain control of it. And we got two life. And then we would find different ways of recycling this card with fast bond, time twister, things of that nature. Now, nowadays with landfall decks, all kinds of other crazy creations that allow us to go back time and time again to get lands from our graveyards, this card can be a very appealing negotiation tactic card inside Commander, and that's why it continues to have strong sales each and every week. That and the fact it's on the reserve list, that says enough for itself. Way to go, Rainbow Veil, you're hanging in there. Let's count this down to the last card on our journey on the Yellow Brick Road. Number one. Out of nowhere, out of the shadows, this is it. Homerage Shaman, Fallen Empires. 400 and nine sales this week. And it all happened on the 28th. It was insane, guys. This is just nuts. Somebody said, I like this guy. He's a forecasting cost for a 2-1. And by the way, you can tap a target green creature. I like that. Because let's face it, you can tap a lot of green creatures with just a little bit of mana. I understand why some blue decks might like to have this in as a control card. But that is a very large very big amount of sales to have happen in one week. And this again is a Fallen Empires card. We can't, you can't discount how much is going on out there. These low end reserve list buyouts, they just keep happening. They're not done. Because somebody can get that many cards for like $400 US. They can go out and corner the market by draining this from all kinds of things like TCG player, local LGSs. They just consolidate a very large position. So it's not so-and-so store that has two copies. John and Ben's Remax Sellers Market that has two copies. It's not Ben and Jerry's that has two copies. The Taco King's two copies. Or even Moxman's two copies. Because whoever bought these cards put them all together and said, my position inside this particular card now fills an entire binder, almost two. And they did it in one shot for 400 bucks. That's crazy. That's, that's how buyouts work. Because that card can be played actually. It costs a lot to get out, don't get me wrong. But if that thing hits the field and you're playing against green creatures, being able to tap their stuff is something pretty awesome. You just have to keep it alive for a little while, make sure it doesn't die. And there's lots of ways of doing that. So thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for hanging out on the channel and chilling out with me today on a Sunday before our live stream at night and checking out the hottest selling cards on the reserve list this week. This was the hot 10. This is what goes down. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Looking forward to reading your comments in the comment section. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And of course, if you're a new subscriber, welcome aboard. Can't wait to see your comment. Have an awesome day wherever you guys are in the world of magic. Hey guys, a big shout out goes out to all the fantastic patrons on this channel who allow, who stand by me as these videos get created. You guys rock. That's a lot of sales.
Welcome to the end of the video. Hope you guys are having an awesome day wherever you are. That card's not that bad, you know. Forget that it's a 2-1. Forget all that stuff. Pay one blue, tap a green creature. You can mess people up. And in a commander game, that actually will probably be played. It probably can be played if you build it right. If you build it, they will play it. I'm curious to see if that ever gets played. Do you guys ever use that card? Homer Shaman. I have a couple. I don't think I've ever put it into an actual deck since like my teenage years though. Interesting. Back then we were tapping Land of War Elves, you know? Little Dryads and maybe a Tree Folk. Nothing like we have nowadays. Crazy stuff. Well, thanks a lot for hanging out with me. Thanks for chilling out, guys. Thanks for being the special people who make it to the end of the videos. Let's put Shaman in the comments section to say we made it this far. I look forward to seeing you guys on the live stream. Check it out. We're going to have a good time.